wood. Fatima joins me in the life-sized corridor. Our vantage makes the most of geometry. We see every exit. She pulls the last of the boarding passes from my pockets, my departures meaningless. We hold each other's gazes shyly. We will wait until the shift is over. Hands pressed to tiled wall, it's held till a respite for recycled air. It's like we're real here, almost, we whisper, but not quite. I reposition glass walls, plate platter, mark, mock door. The strangers hurry in as they always do in situations like this. They line up to have their faces buffed to plainness. They are always lighting up. Two. Fatima wakes in a non-place where her name means less than the enormity. Atima, says she, at times I'm an item. Item, Sachiko, stump of a gal in an imaginary airport. Feet stamped to bring feeling back, who ignored the sensation of being watched and focused on leaving. Try again, look up. Feet on the ground, Einstein, Daniel, red shirt. Three. Fatima and I take a breather from the unreal. She flips back to deathly polish. She leaves for her break through a door I can't enter. In the real world, I am useless. Einstein, Daniel, Red shirt. The sound of Fatima's dilemma as she walks away. Russell, Russell. Russell, Russell. Did you hear that? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ellie. poems aren't that serious. Uh, this one came to me from Tannis McDonald, who's a wonderful poet and academic out in Kitchener-Waterloo. And um, she sent me this that she observed at the Vancouver International Airport. After hearing a man shout, Jim, 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 at another man until he turned around, it dawns on me that Goat Boy is on my flight to Kelowna. <laughs> No footage on YouTube of Goat Boy, just so you know. Do you mean Jim Brewer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it dawns on Jim that Tannis is on his flight to Kelowna. <laughs> the internet brays, Tannis, Tannis, Tannis. <laughs> the data double turns around, its form disassembled into usable brain metrics. Google Account for the Humanimal in mid-90s broadcast comedy. Google, meow, meow, meow. <laughs> gotta work on that. <laughs> beneath the two coos of Livia's ears, beneath thumbs whose mouths spray. I spit into a tube and send away for an account of my genes. I catch sight of myself in a mirror and inwardly bray. Kelowna, sight of my sister's birth as captured by the vital statistics agency. Kelowna, where goats go to revive their careers as content producers. <laughs> OMG, poet Tannis just sat down next to me. Sachiko Murakami. Yes, or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one came to me from Dina Del Bucchia. There are so many people looking lost, sad, tired, and nowhere to buy a damned milkshake. 
And so this made me think immediately of what would happen if there were a zombie apocalypse? What would, like, how would I do? And I was like, I would be screwed because I'd just be like in withdrawal from my antidepressants and I'd be useless. So, can you even see the connection? Right? Oh, Jane. <laughs> so this is, thank you, Dina. You're welcome. Rick slings his rifle and rips the moist towelette with his white teeth, daubs my brow. Three days since the pills ran out. Don't go gentle, not now, Rick. <laughs> I put a scab hand near his. Synapses slip past from then to now to here, pulled by the vision of a cargo plane full of blister pack pills. Every pharmacy in town relieved of its bupropion, its deloxetine, capsules and slow-release granules and thick pink slugs to curb the shock and shiver of each little neural apocalypse as synapses search and rage their works forked by lightning. Streets of full of the fallen who couldn't keep running, who lie down and let the dead feed on half-beating hearts. His eyes search mine, looking for my resolve. More and more of me drips out in sweat. The walkers shuffle from gate to gate, arms unswinging like they're deep in Haldol, lucky them. Not yet, not yet. I hand him the makeshift spear that's kept me whole. Not yet, Rick. <laughs> My blood sugar is so low, I can't remember what it feels like to sing the sun into flight. If I had my way, I'd lie down at the gate and scroll aimlessly on my iPad while Rick fights through to the plane where my relief waits. I close my eyes against the thought of a hot shower, a cold vanilla milkshake in a backyard, not yet. Rick counts ammo while I roll over, playing my private, imaginary, bejeweled, the only thing that stops the seizures. Right fingers flick against left palm in the dying of light. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is the last one. Uh, it kind of, the observation came to me from Heather Jessup, who is uh, just got her PhD. Um, she was living up here, and I believe she's returning um, from the Vancouver International Airport. Move the height of masks, all I want to see is your face. And this poem is for my nephew Judah, who is of Kwak Wak Yawak descent. Did I say that right? I'm so bad. <laughs> Move the height of masks, all I want to see is your face. I was really sad when I came out to the baggage carousel, you know? And usually when I see that here, I'm like, oh, I'm